here. Welcome again to another edition of our Great Kids podcast. Today, I'm here with my friend Jessica Gervais, who's the training coordinator for Great Kids. And again, my name is Amanda Miller. I'm the executive director for Great Kids. Today, we're welcoming Dr. Dave. Thank you so much, mm-hmm. sir. Could you introduce yourself to the, to our listening and viewing audience? Sure. Um, I'm a professor of nursing at the University of St. Francis, and I'm an employee assistant specialist at Parkview Health. And we do a lot of work with trauma and resiliency and helping people to to use mindfulness-based practices to improve their well-being. And a long, long, long time friend of great kids. So I can't believe we haven't done a podcast with Dr. Dave yet. Yeah. But it was so well, we thought obvious. this was round two when we were scheduling it. <laughs> Did we? Right. And Did then we, we thought, oh my gosh, we have we've talked about it so much. Yeah. But yeah, you're right. This you're is right. the first you're one right. that we're actually doing. That's right. Because right. we were like, oh, we were done that. Wait, no, I think we overlooked that. I mean, that sounds like us. Um, so I wanted, I mean, you know, now that we're looking at the close of the year, which is so hard to believe, but we're looking towards the close of the year and of course the beginning of a new year. And so often I feel like at least most of us spend a little time in reflection now in terms of what did the year look like? What lessons did we take in? What things do we maybe want to um, be more intentional about in the year coming forward? Uh, People a lot of times will throw around the word resolutions instead of, now I don't do resolutions. I never really have quite frankly, because I don't want to tie to a date. I'll let you know, you're not going to tell me. And so (laughs) that's kind of something that like resolution, something I've run away from, but I do like some of the newer, um, verbiage when it comes to looking at changes you want to make in your life. Um, You want to chat a little bit about what that might look like as we're closing out 2022 and moving into 2023? Yeah, I, I, I'm not a big one on making resolutions either. And at the same time, I am about hitting pause buttons Mm -hmm. daily. Mm -hmm. We call mindfulness a practice and that practice requires us to stop. Mm-hmm. In fact, we use the acronym STOP, STOP, S, the STOP, T, take a deep breath, O, observe, and the P, to proceed. And so I do think the end of the year is a great time to hit a pause button. And I would go so far as to schedule the pause. Mm-hmm. I think the end of the year is a great time to reflect in terms of what worked or what didn't work, or what are our aspirations? What are the things we need to let go of? What are the things we need to hold on to? I think the pause button is really important at the end of the year and to to actually kind of schedule time to do that. Mm -hmm. I was just thinking, I liked what you said about scheduling the time to do that because I feel like, I mean, this has been years now that we've had the pleasure of working with you and getting to sit through, you know, these conversations about mindfulness and and hitting the pause button. And I still no. struggle with yes. finding the time to do it. And, you know, it's so ironic because it's, and I'm sure a lot of people can relate, it's typically when I need it most that I'm like, I, I don't have the time. I don't have the time for it. Um, but I think putting something down where it's more tangible, like whether it's in your phone on your calendar or um, in a planner that you use, like if it's on the calendar, I think a lot of us are much more inclined to like, oh, we've got to check that thing off. Like we've got to, <laughs> we've got to accomplish yeah. that thing, right? Like it's on our to-do list and it's something that's actually healthy for us and going to benefit us. So um, I just, I, yeah, I love that suggestion because I found that that is really helpful for me that I have to put it on a calendar and make it a priority. Otherwise it's so easy just to continue to push it off. It's ironic too, because I do have this sense of, I don't want to make a resolution because I want to feel like I'm, I'm making a step towards, you know, I'm choosing. However, if you to tell me to stop, I'm like, good, thank you for telling me to stop. I need someone to give me permission to stop because I feel like that's where I don't give myself permission to think about what I'm doing. So let me just, for example, I, I think often about what you teach about mindfulness when it comes to eating and like stop, you know, take in what you're eating, observe that, you know, take that deep breath. It's okay to taste your food. Right, right. <laughs> and it's <laughs> not just throwing something down the hatch or whatever. You know, uh, I think about that and I think about, gosh, how much of what I do is completely mindless. And what I should do 
in my mind or what I've been doing and is really not healthy, beneficial, making positive change. You know, I, I don't know. I feel like it's so easy to be the hamster running on the wheel. Mm-hmm. Sometimes you need we're a society of multitasking. Oh, uh, for like, sure. Yes. I mean, yeah. and so often it feels like out of necessity, but I think it's probably nearly impossible to be mindful while you're multitasking, right? So I think I'm sure that there's a lot of challenge and, and conflict that comes in. Yeah, I am such a multitasker to the point where I'm like, I'm not doing anything well. I'm, I'm, all mm-hmm. of this is pretty crappy because I'm not doing it. But it is such a breath of fresh air for, to hear, no, you need to stop and maybe you should schedule that stop. Yeah, I, I, uh, if there was one recommendation for the new year, I would say to everyone is figure out when to hit this pause button and make it part of the day. So in, it, it doesn't have to be a long period of time. Three minutes will feel like eternity. In, Amen. <clears throat> it will. I was like, three minutes? <laughs> three. I can give you 30 seconds. <laughs> the, yeah, yeah. Because we, we've we got this, this sense of, you use the hamster wheel, Amanda, and I do think this notion of, of going, going, doing, doing more, more, more. And the more we do, the more we have this need to do more. Mm -hmm. We live in a culture of more Mm -hmm. versus enoughness. Mm -hmm. This is enough. Mm -hmm. I've eaten enough. I've drank enough. I've worked enough. This is enough. That's enough. The setting of boundary. You know, I'm enough. Mm -hmm. You know. I'm enough because the committee in the head sometimes isn't a pretty committee. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know? It works over time. Yes. It over and time. it's so hard. It's funny. I think back to this past weekend on Sunday. At one point, I was like laying on the couch. Mm-hmm. I don't know, probably like watching some Guilting TV. Guilting yourself for laying on the couch? Yes. Mm-hmm. And I was thinking, what should I be doing? Like, I know that there are things that, and the weekend had been pretty busy up until that point. We were getting our Christmas decorating done, you know, running the kids around and going to Costco and getting our groceries. And for this, like, 10 or 15 minutes that I was sitting on the couch and I'm nine months pregnant. Okay. And I still felt like, <laughs> am I waste? Yes. But it felt like a waste of time. Mm-hmm. And I did, I, you know, I, I was thankful because we've talked enough about this over the years. And I, I do try to be mindful and intentional about allowing myself to just be. And so I was able to talk about like, you're fine, Jessica, you can sit here for 15 minutes and just rest. And I did. And I didn't immediately jump up and start to do something new, but the thought occurred to me while I was sitting there of, yes, like the guilt of what what could I be getting accomplished right now that I maybe won't have time for later And, and so I think when that occurs and we catch ourselves in that, that committee kind of head, to even just be a little soft with the pushback, oh, there it is. Isn't that interesting? I'm hearing that more button, more, 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 mm-hmm. versus no, here's, I'm, I'm just going to pause. And in fact, I'm going to stop. I'm going to take those three slow, deep breaths and I'm going to observe. And the observing piece of this is an internal observation and an external observation. The internal sometimes is this urgency, hallucinatory or delusionary process. Uh, no, the house is not on fire. Mm-hmm. So, but sometimes it feels like the house is on fire. And it's like, oh, then, then we can place our hand on our heart or we can just breathe or we can, you know, my favorite meditation is coffee, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. and, you know, and or, or the tea and just to smell. That is what we're missing today. I'd thought about that this morning. We, we ran from a board meeting straight to here, but I thought, I kept thinking, Oh, I need to have my warm cup of tea or cup mm-hmm. of coffee. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. So that pause button, that STOP sometimes is that first cup of coffee in the morning just to say, oh, I'm gonna do the 60 second meditation here. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna breathe and take a couple of slow deep breaths. And if I have an urgency hallucination going on, just to name it. Mm-hmm. Oh wow. Boy, it started early this morning. Isn't that interesting? That's funny. Yeah. I heard Somebody wants to talk about feelings in a certain way and that um, if you're struggling with those feelings, to put them in the car and watch them pass you on the road and know that they will pass you. It may be slow, maybe fast, 
but they will pass you. Just like mm-hmm. that sense of that committee will die down, die down. that, you know, guilt mm-hmm. will pass, um, and that you need to wait it out maybe. And yeah, not yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I do think that that is the whole notion of mindfulness is building up the resiliency yeah. to recognize that cravings pass mm-hmm. or our need to do more or have more or be more when I do have enough time. I do. The thing we, we hear, how often do we hear around the holidays, you know, at year end, you know, I, I, I have too much to do. Mm-hmm. I have too much to do. Mm-hmm. And so I do think a resolution or an intention at the end of the year is to start to rethink, to the reset, the mindset of enoughness. No, no, I have enough. I have enough on my plate. I don't need to do more. And in fact, if I get really good at email, I just get more email. Yeah. Yeah. If I get so efficient with my time, I just get more to do. Right. The, the whack-a-mole is real. Yeah. It is. Yeah. I've been thinking a lot more lately, too, as my kids are getting a little bit older. I mean, they're still young. My oldest is eight. But I've noticed with him in particular um, that he st- has started paying a lot closer attention to I keep a dry erase calendar in our kitchen. So the idea is that the family is constantly on the same page of what's going on. Sure. Not that anybody but me reads it, but that's a story for a different day. But you um, did it. <laughs> I did it. Well, and I guess, and now I'm starting to be proved wrong because I'll notice that yes. that little Eddie will um, notice things on there. And, and maybe it's because between the three kids and being nine months pregnant, I don't have as much energy to go, 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 that he's noticing empty spots to fill with things. Well, we don't have anything going on that day. So can we go skating? And then can we go here? And can we do? And it's just, it's really been in the past couple of weeks that, because I think I found myself telling him that I was like, but that's just a day. Like Sunday, it's just going to be a family day and we're just going to rest and we're not going to put anything on the calendar and it's going to be okay. And it's just, it's got me thinking more about what are we modeling for our kids and for younger, you know, the younger people in our lives who see us constantly go, 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 go. And scheduling this in here and squeezing this in there and you know I don't I don't want that kind of lifestyle for my kid because I know how overwhelming it feels so I feel like I don't only owe it to myself to try to be more intentional about slowing down and allowing myself to to relax and just to to take in to breathe to breathe yeah Mm -hmm. yeah um and now that cadence of a sabbat or a sabbath Mm-hmm. or a day of rest. I mean, we we have this built into our life cycle. We do. We have the the morning sunshine and we have the evening, mm-hmm. you know, uh, is sundown. Mm-hmm. And this notion of you know, the the world that never sleeps mm-hmm. is is doing us all a disfavor, mm-hmm. right? You know? So building into it a a pattern or a rhythm, whether we start our day with a cup of coffee and hit the pause button of a couple of slow deep breaths, or before mealtime, hit the pause button, you know, with the children around the table. And before we any of us put anything into our mouths, we 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 say a prayer or a reflection mm-hmm. or a, a just how was your day? Mm-hmm. You know? So we we put punctuation points. We know that this is important, especially around the holidays, because around the holidays, a lot of times we think about the people that are no longer around the table. Mm -hmm. And we think about how their lives impacted us. Mm -hmm. And so then we have this sense of gratitude and we have the sense of, um, you know, this, we we want a little bit slower pace. Mm -hmm. And then we get in the hamster wheel the next day. Mm -hmm. So New Year's resolutions, New Year's intentions are to say, oh, okay, so how do we, how do we, how do we put this practice into place? So a cadence of a Sunday or a Saturday afternoon or, or Thursday evening, this is what we do. You know, we, we build that in or the a.m. is filled with this, or the, the noontime luncheon. I do 10 minutes 
of just slow, deep breathing during my, during my lunch break or five minute walk in nature. You know, people re don't go outside when it's cold out. And I say, with the cadence of sleep, everyone needs to go outside at least as early in the day to get that sunlight because everything mm -hmm. we know about sleep mm -hmm. says that the pattern starts with, with sunrise. Mm -hmm. And so, and it's pretty compelling research to get outside 10 minutes of early sunlight each day. It sets the tone for our sleep pattern that evening. Mm. So, yeah. So right walk up. those kids to the bus. Because you need <laughs> walk to. the kids to the bus. Wait, yes. the sun's up when you're kids. <laughs> yeah. In the three months of the year. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know, I, 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 differences between intentions and, and resolutions. Mm -hmm. You know, I think... Yeah, I think we push back on resolutions maybe because... It feels like one more thing to do. One more thing to do. Mm -hmm. And if there was any advice I would get, give, uh, it would be when you hit the pause button, is there one less thing to do? Yeah, that's a really good point. Mm -hmm. Is there one less thing? Start looking thing? at it that way. Yeah. Maybe a, a realignment of priorities and maybe something can stop mm -hmm. Yeah. completely. And, and, and also then ask ourselves intention. I know... For me, as I've grow, grown a few years older, I think about where my body kept score. Mm -hmm. And so the intention of, for me to be a little bit less judgmental mm. or to be a little bit more kind or to be a little bit more grateful. And so, you know, in the in the addictions world or in the treatment world, a lot of times we'll give people tokens, you know, Weight Watchers gives a little token if you lose X amount of weight or if you go to AA, they give you a 30 day, 90 day year token. And so I use the the, the puzzle piece, as you know, when I do trainings, I, I tell people, you know, look at the puzzle piece and, and come to curiosity because curiosity, curiosity really is our superpower. Mm -hmm. It's our superpower. But in addition to building the capacity for curiosity in the new year, I would say turn the piece, the puzzle piece over and write the intention. Is there an intention for health? What, you know, you don't have to figure out what that means. Or if there's an intention to be tender. Mm -hmm. I know it, 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 once I was diagnosed with cancer or heart disease, uh, the multitude of other stuff that happens as we age, you know, I began to look at, okay, so how do I build tenderness into this? Because my body was keeping score. And so I wrote the word tender on the back of a puzzle piece and put it in my pocket. Why? So that in, when the committee in the head started doing some wacko things, I could get out my intention. It was very concrete. Mm -hmm. How do you build tenderness? Ah, will you wake up to it? How do you build curiosity or how do you build gratitude or how do you build uh, forgiveness? You know, people get stuck. They hold on to old hurt, mm -hmm. old anger. Um, you know, Great Kids is all about resiliency and helping people to know what to let go of mm -hmm. and then what to add mm -hmm. to their physical, mental, and spiritual well-being. So I like the puzzle piece, if I was to give anyone to our listeners, you know, it would be, you know, hit the stop, mm -hmm. stop, take a deep breath, observe, proceed, um, turn on a bit of curiosity. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I might say, write it down. Do you guys keep that, journals? Okay. So that's, that's, about, yeah. <laughs> so again, maybe I have like a buck authority personality or something. Cause when someone says journal, I'm like, Oh, for crying out loud. Like, I don't want one more thing to do. Help me reframe yeah. journaling. Yeah, yeah. Okay, first of all, journaling is not a diary. And so the old notion of writing things down daily is, you know, th that might work for some folks. But truly, the notion of the journal is is a very tactile, sensory process. Because when I write it down, I can write it, which is that kinesthetic. Um, I can read it. I can see it. I can hear it. It becomes multi-sorting, multi-sensory for sorting through. So it's very helpful if I'm going to set an intention of, let's say, working on my physical or mental or spiritual well-being is to just write it down. Um, the journal becomes a way of setting an intention and then maybe setting the intention of going back and looking what that intention was a week from now mm -hmm. 
or a month from now? You know, did did we move the needle on that intention? Or what was the what was the barriers to moving that needle? You know, and and reflecting on some of that writing. So that's one way to do a journal. But <clears throat> the other thing I would say to our listeners is write down the questions. To heck with narrative. Just write down the questions. Just are what are the questions to, what, that if you knew the answers to the questions, you would be you would have a greater sense of resiliency, a greater sense of health, a greater sense of uh, of spiritual groundedness. Mm-hmm. What are the questions? And so you don't have to answer the questions in the new year, but do you even know what the questions are? Mm-hmm. Well, that brings me to uh, that's where I feel like I often get hung up with journaling, and you gave some great examples of kind of where to start. Um, but it's like that prompt of, I, I find that I do much better if I'm a part of like a, a yoga series where we've done that. That's yes. just been part of yes. the evening is that we're given a, a prompt, prompt or a few prompts yes. and then asked to think about and journal. And then um, sometimes it's still challenging, but it's it gives me somewhere to start from instead of just, I think so many of us are like, oh my gosh, where do we, our minds well, we are just, so busy. We just came from a meeting wherein we, wherein we were like, we got so much great stuff because we gave a framework. Right, right. We asked specific questions right. versus and just we gave us a, feedback. And I think yeah. that's helpful because often, I mean, you take in so much during the day and experience so many things. And from you're constantly um, stimulated, different, whatever, by the it can feel like a real challenge to slow down, like a significant challenge to yeah. make yourself There's another thing sit. I have to figure out. Right. Like I have to slow myself down enough to sit and think of something semi-intelligent. Okay, this is what you're thinking. This is what I'm thinking to mm-hmm. myself to write down yeah. that a week from now is going to mean beans to me. Yes. So do and you so, do you have any other suggestions on if we, okay, wonderful. If we want to start journaling, yeah. how do we take some of like that complication out of it of where do I even begin? Okay. What do I, what so do I journal So one about? of the things that you both have mentioned is the notion of a few prompts. And so sometimes a journaling book mm-hmm. is helpful. You know, for our reader, for our listeners, I would use a couple of prompts like, um, what is so stressful in my life? What do I need to let go of? What do I need to hold on to? What are my strengths? What are my opportunities? What are my aspirations? If I was wanting to focus on healthy eating, I might say, you know, what am I eating? How am I eating? Why do I eat? What's eating me? I would start looking at the questions. If I wanted a a, a, a greater relationship with higher power, I might just ask the questions. What gave me stability and anchor with higher power earlier in my life? Are there books? Are there resources? or their mentors, or their guides that I can reconnect with in the new year. So the journal becomes a place where we write down some of those questions. But I would go back to the pause button the same way with the journal, that the journal might sit next to the nightstand that says, you know, I go back to this and I look at it. I look at my journal almost every day. I don't always write in it, but it's right there. And I can pop it open and I can say, oh, That was my thought two weeks ago, two months ago. I haven't written anything for two months. Okay, that's okay. It's not like I have to write things down. It's for my eyes only. Mm -hmm. The rules of journaling are very, very loose. My eyes only. Because if I'm writing for somebody else's eyes, that's called a letter, Mm -hmm. you know, Mm -hmm. and that's fine. But if it's for my eyes only, uh, you know, I I, I write differently. Um, And sometimes it's just, I want to ponder this question. If I want to work on forgiveness, I might write the forgiveness letter, you know, to myself. Something happened earlier in my life. I want to let go of. It's not what I'm eating. It's what's eating me. And so I'm going to write the letter. So uh, is uh, what to do? Get a book, get a resource, give me a call. I mean, we do free consults on these kind of things mm-hmm. through the Center for Healthy Living. You know, come to a workshop, you know, where we continue to build those practices. Mm-hmm. And we call it a practice again. Many people start a journal. You know, they buy the book. It sits on the nightstand. Mm-hmm. They write it one at one time, mm-hmm. and then they feel like a failure. And I would say, you wrote in it one time. That's a success. Mm-hmm. Maybe next year you'll write in it two times. But continue on. Take it with you on vacation. 
take it with you if, you know, you've got downtime at a physician's office. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, there are times when we're waiting for kids' appointments, you know, that it's it's great to just hit a pause button and do a, a little bit of a reflection. That is so true. Mm. I'm thinking about how often do we text each other about oh, sitting We're in the here. pediatrician's yeah. office We're for here. 40 minutes again. We're but very minutes. rarely do I actually take the opportunity to do something like that. Normally I'm spending it doing. Yeah. <laughs> right. And, my, and you know, we're on, we're on, you know, we're scrolling. Oh yes. yeah. We're yeah, scrolling. Facebook scrolling, we're scrolling. Or answering emails. Answering emails. And e emails. Oh yeah. I can crank out three more of them. And I love the voice to text. Yep, yep, yep. Dun, 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 dun. Yep. So people will sometimes ask me, is an electronic journal as good of or better than a handwritten journal? And to that I say, maybe. It depends on what you're doing. For for me, sometimes getting an insight down on paper, insight, I will I will do a voice to text. Mm -hmm. But that's not really what I'm feeling. Mm -hmm. And so the feeling part, you know, when we think in terms of the wiring, the neurology of this, you know, putting the pen in the non-dominant hand wakes us up. So nothing goes into the journal with before I put the pen or the pencil into the non-dominant hand and then I cross over yeah. and I'm ready to write. Because I, even I couldn't read it if I wrote it. Which <laughs> yeah. not, uh, no idea. Yeah. No idea. Yeah. Yeah. But it's just, a, it's just a place to pause. To be able to say, okay, what are the questions mm -hmm. that if I knew the answers to these questions? So yeah, get a notebook, put it on the bedside. If you if you if you could write a reflection this year, it might be something you know um, in terms of strength. Um, what are what are my strengths? You know, because resiliency is always about knowing what our strengths are. I'm really good at this. Okay, great. Mm -hmm. What are some of my opportunities this year? That I would, you know, I would write about that. What are my opportunities? Because I'm not going to do all those opportunities, but I might set an intention. Uh, oh, this year I'm going to, uh, I have an aspiration. Well, and I think it had come up a little bit earlier and we didn't spend a lot of time talking about it, but just on the topic of gratitude mm -hmm. also, I've noticed that um, for me, a, often a lot of times in my journal, I kind <laughs> of use my kind of like a diary. Yeah. I feel like it's a place where I can unload. Sure. So there's a lot of, I don't know what maybe you'd call negativity sure. that goes I don't in think there. That's bad. Yeah. Um, not necessarily, no. Yeah. But when I've again been intentional and been asked to take the time to like make a list of things that you're grateful for, mm -hmm. yeah. or I think we've all kind of seen those like prompts somewhere yeah. that it's like, imagine that you woke up this morning with only the things that you expressed gratitude for the day before. What would that list look like? Mm -hmm. And yeah, I know. Thank mm -hmm. goodness that that hasn't, hasn't <laughs> happened. But typically I've been pleasantly surprised to see that list because I feel like for whatever reason, it's natural or easier for us to focus on the things that aren't going wrong. Like the goals that we didn't hit, um, were we as productive as we could have been? Like we spend so much time focusing on that, that when I was asked to actually write out and look at a list of things that I'm grateful for, I was like, I've got a long list. Like I'm blessed. Like things are, things are good, but I don't spend as much time thinking about those things for whatever reason. So um, I don't do it as often as I probably should, but I know in this conversation that, that thought kind of came up for me that it's probably a good time of year for me to do that again. It's probably been several months, but I think that can be really helpful in like reframing uh, the way that we view ourselves in our lives. I too, heard someone when, say that they like, <clears throat> they write it on their bathroom mirror, they, yeah. the three yeah. things they're grateful for yeah. every day. And uh, number one, it's the tactile. Mm, sensory. Of writing. Yes, of writing. Number two. Yeah, that's good. That's first thing in the morning. And then it's also... I mean, for me, I visit that place mm -hmm. first thing in the morning and last thing, at, yeah. or, or, you know, close to last at night. I like that. Um, like, you can also be like, okay, so what did, did I remember any of that today as I was going about my day? Mm -hmm. Can I revisit where I was this morning? What's changed about, you know, that? Yeah. And I thought that was really insightful to put it on your bathroom mirror. Uh you know, you can get those little markers that are specifically yeah. for it. I thought that was really a good idea. And of course, I haven't done it because, you know, that <laughs> well, means there I you have go. To, a New Year's resolution. That means I have to remember to get the markers and all that stuff. But yeah, I thought, I just thought that would be a, yeah. a good, at least hopefully help set a healthier balance of well, instead of only focusing on the things today that are stressing me out that I like need to get done. Not a to do list. These are things to be like grateful. To do yeah. lists exist everywhere in my life. Yeah. It's in my inbox, it's in my, 
it literally keep it in my head. It's like in my car. There's, th you know, I throw things in my car so I don't forget to do it. Like it's everywhere in my life. I, I, you know, leave to-do lists for myself, but I don't really leave time or things to be grateful for. And I just feel like, you know, if we're talking about, like you talked about earlier, what we're setting for our kid, the mm -hmm. example we're setting right. for our kids. My kids are in and out. I'm lazy and I don't want to clean more than one bathroom. So I include, I often in, in encourage them to use our bathroom. Mm -hmm. Just think about the example that is for them passing by mom and dad's mirrors that have mm -hmm. things that they're grateful for. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. I mean, that's just, I feel like for all the other things I'm doing wrong, that's something I yes. can do right. Yeah, mm -hmm. another way that we can model yeah. that for our kids. Well, and I really do think sometimes, so again, back to unpacking journaling i would say the mirror is just another platform mm -hmm. for journaling mm -hmm. i think the post-it notes mm -hmm. you know um the gratitude notes that we give our kids i remember when my kids were young you know i had the little the little gratitude cards and on occasion i would write a little note down to a kiddo and put it in their lunch mm -hmm. or put it on their pillow that evening and mm -hmm. you know years later i found a kid had a little stack of cards that i had given him and so you know the the idea here of when we put things in writing mm -hmm. there is a slowing down mm -hmm. with that when we prime the pump of our brain to say what am i grateful for or how are you special to my in my life because when we lose something in our life mm -hmm. we're mm -hmm. filled with insight mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right and so the notion of getting ahead of that you know of being of being present to what is working in our lives and what we're grateful for is always great at the new year to set the intention of doing a bit more of that but i i if there was one other thing i would say it's give ourselves a whole lot of leeway mm. in the new year mm -hmm. a whole lot of leeway because this isn't about doing more mm -hmm. we are enough Mm -hmm. We've had enough. This is enough. I am enough. Mm -hmm. You are enough. Great kids is enough. Oh, thank you, Dr. Think on that and I'll just <laughs> go take a nap in the parking lot. And I know. Say, and you, that was so beautiful. I, I was just thinking, I'm like, it's it's probably about time. We would sit here yeah, all afternoon and would, talk to you, Dr. Dave. But uh, for the sake this of the is podcast. Hilarious because we, <laughs> so just some insight for you who follow along on our podcast. So we always come up with uh, things we want to chat about, make sure we hit and we usually props, ask, who, right, <laughs> right. We usually ask our speaker to, to, you know, give us a few things that they're prepared to chat on and whatever. And I knew coming in, I was like, A, we're going to have no problem filling the time. <laughs> and B, we're going to hop all over the place. And I called. I mean, I think it. we had a few of these things. We absolutely and, and did. Some, but so. we absolutely did. But only if I had, I had to like look at the paper and be like, oh, right, right, right. But oh my gosh. Yeah. Dave, but I think that that so was such a beautiful note yeah. to, to yeah. end on. And yeah. I know I need that reminder all the I do time too. of like, I'm so big on extend grace, extend grace, extend grace. And sometimes I need that mirror, I think, to reflect that. I back think, I think maybe we'll put a bit of grace on this oh, for there both we of go. you today. That'll be on my puzzle piece. Yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I think, yes, that's true. A because I, I need a reminder, even because I often put my hands in my pocket and mess around with whatever's in there, mm -hmm. even if it's pocket fuzz. <laughs> and I think that would be helpful for me to be like, oh, man, I just cut yourself some slack. Give yourself a lot of slack this yeah. year. Yeah. Well, I think that was a great note to end on. Before we yes. officially close out, is there, do you have any last suggestions or words of wisdom for us? Yeah. Hit the pause button. Mm. S-T-O-P. Take mm -hmm. a slow, deep breath. Stop. Observe. When you have that urgency, that hallucinatory, that delusional process to do more, mm -hmm. to be more, mm -hmm. to have more, come back to this notion of enough enoughness mm -hmm. that's enough i'm enough we're enough yeah mm. i love that yes thank you again thank we you. appreciate yes. you and thank you to all of you who tuned in <sighs> we're not exactly sure when we'll produce another one of these sometime in early 2023 when our fourth member of great kids joins us <laughs> uh but until then we appreciate you and your time and we also appreciate the lutheran foundation that funds the mental health series including these podcasts as well as Follinger foundation the primary funder of great kids thanks again bye-bye